these are the people who I want to appeal to. Make those little slips. It happens. You have to have a plan. Ability to manage your problems effectively. How are you going to do it? Fall off the horse, you jump right back on. Right. Mr. Ann? Welcome back, everyone. We are now joined by the fabulous <laughs> Miss Jenny Lovell. Yes. She is going to be. Good morning, Miss Jenny. Mm -hmm. She is going to be talking to us about something very important. As you know, we have been discussing mm -hmm. uh, different aspects of the workplace this week. Mm -hmm. And now, Miss Jenny is going to talk to us about um, workplace etiquette. Or right. I think um, you had a more. Uh, well, I like the idea of people need to understand the psychology of the workplace yeah. mm -hmm. and how to behave in the workplace because there's I mean nobody really sends us to school or teaches us in the, in the universities we're not taught how to behave in the workplace yeah yeah and so a lot of people fall down and make all kinds of errors you know that face so <laughs> it's like you have some stories but there is a psychology involved because yes. you are working with other human beings exactly. whether you're frontline with customer service or just your co-workers yes. and so uh, you know you're the psychologist you, you tell us how to handle it yes. <laughs> so I'm putting here why is this important okay right. and number one how you present yourself to others in the workplace really matters mm -hmm. Because it's a lasting impression. You're going to be there. Hopefully, when you come there, you're not planning to be there a few months. You're planning to be there for a career. Yeah. Right? It's important to set a professional tone while you're building new relationships. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember you're in the workplace, so you've got to set that professional tone. Mm -hmm. And the third one, it ensures a positive, successful experience in the workplace. Mm. So etiquette. Etiquette means good manners. Mm -hmm. We had to learn that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure it's being taught anymore. <laughs> so um, we, we have to take the same etiquette into the workplace. Yeah. And let's talk about now making a first. The first one would be making a first good impression. First impressions are lasting. Yes. Yeah. So it's very important that when you come into the workplace, you set that first impression as a good impression. Yeah. We, we form impressions seconds after we meet somebody. That's right. Don't we? Yes. And uh, we judge you based upon Sometimes that. before you start speaking. Yes, yeah. we judge you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, it's human nature, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so these are critical. The first, those first few seconds are really, really critical. Yeah. You have to be aware of your body language. Mm -hmm. what are you, what's your body language saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you come in there and you're all slouched down, your head's down, you're giving off the impression of being um, shy, reticent, can't handle a job there's no confidence mm -hmm. yeah. um, so a good rule of thumb when you come into the workplace for the first time is to stand up straight yeah. make sure you maintain eye contact and mm -hmm. smile <laughs> very important so you exude that air of confidence right I always talk about in, in sessions and in workshops and when I'm speaking to people I talk about self-confidence and you may not feel it. We call it fake it till you make it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So uh -huh. you, 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 you put forward that impression yeah. of, of being in control by standing up straight and yeah. making sure you smile. Yeah. Right? And make eye contact. contact. Very important. Yeah. Right? And learn what the dress code is for your <laughs> office. I see people going to some of these jobs and they have these little short, I mean, shorter than short skirts going into offices. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't know if they, anybody says anything to them in the workplace, but what's the impression? You're not going to a dance. Mm -hmm. You're going to the workplace. Yeah. Right? So your, your clothing needs to be proper length. It cannot be tight. Mm -hmm. you, you're not going to a dance. Mm -hmm. Um, so know the dress code for the place where you're working. If they do not have a written dress code, common sense. Mm -hmm. You're not going to a dance. Yeah. It's a common and sense is not so common though. And I think that's, uh, that, that brings up something important because especially if you're talking about like a job interview, mm -hmm. to show that you want the job, it sh mm -hmm. you should have done your research about right. what, you know, so you should show your level of enthusiasm, your level of interest in, in you company. know, in the company. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I, sometimes I sit on panels for, you know, for hire mm -hmm. and it's amazing sometimes how people show up for interviews. <laughs> Right? First impressions. Yeah. You want this job, you need to come and put forth your best foot. Yeah. 
you know, that's why we're having this week, uh, Jenny, because we've seen it too. And I was telling Gavin yesterday, I feel that the thing is, a lot of us learn this from home. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a parent that perhaps emphasizes uh, how you dress for work, what your work ethic is, mm -hmm. how hard you work, mm -hmm. how long you stick it out before you give up, right. those are kind of the things that you, you learn at home because you never learn it in school. Mm -hmm. So I might have a particular style because that's been inculcated by mm -hmm. uh, what my mother's work ethic was. Right. But if you don't get it at home, then, you know, how do you man maneuver it? Because you say, like you say, it's common sense, but... But not really. But if I'm never not exposed really. to the difference between a Friday night outfit or a Monday morning yeah. outfit, yeah. Um, then how do I learn that? Learn what the code is for your office, yeah. for your workplace, and how other people in the workplace dress. Yeah. Right. A simple thing, if you're wearing these tight skirts in the workplace, you have to be careful how you sit too. Mm -hmm. I, it's always amazing to me to go to some workplaces and you see people like they're at home on their couch and like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Another thing, avoid gossip. Mm. Do not get into the office gossip, or I call it office, but any of your workplace. Get, don't get into the gossip, mm -hmm. okay, the rumor mill, because sometimes people will ask you what you think, and you're just saying what you think, Yeah. but it's a part of the rumor mill, and you get, you, it gets um, associated to you that, oh, and you know Marlene agrees with me because she said this and this and this, <laughs> and you're in the middle of a gossip thing just by simply agreeing or saying, um, oh yeah, I, I understand that or something, mm -hmm. so avoid gossip. So, how you treat people says a whole lot about you. Mm -hmm. How you talk to people yeah. says a lot about you. Mm -hmm. So, you, it's very important that if you are rude to your parents at home, you're rude to your sisters at home, you've got to learn a whole new way of speaking. Yeah. Because I'll tell you something, it's not what you say, you know. It's how you say it. Mm -hmm. That's really, really critical. Really critical. You want to avoid negativity. Don't, don't get into talking negatively about your coworkers. One, inner beliefs, we are related somehow or another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I could be talking to somebody and, and they're related to someone right there in the, um, in the office space or mm -hmm. in, the, in the building. So be very careful about talking negatively and getting into negativity. One, it brings you down and it brings everybody else down when you're, you're being constantly negative. Yeah, I think that brings up another important thing because yes, you want to have like a good camaraderie with your work, with your um, co-workers, mm -hmm. but you don't want it to go past the point where it's, you know, inappropriate for mm -hmm. work. It, some things are, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's gossip about, you know, personal information mm -hmm. or, yeah. you know, um, speaking maybe in a respectful of your co-workers or maybe even your supervisors mm, yeah. um, people have to be aware of these types yes, of stuff yes yes yeah. think about how you re you interact with your peers yep mm -hmm. and how you interact with your supervisors mm -hmm. yep. you're you're not at home you're yep. not on the street <laughs> 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 you have to be very careful in the workplace how you speak to people can we just talk about how this extends online because oh, I have we're, seen, we're okay, we I was just going to say that because I, I've seen posts where I just say to myself, man, you know. But well, let me just address that real quickly and say, anything you put online is there forever, you know. Yeah. It, it, you put an email out and it's ugly or something, it's there, it's a record. Yeah. So you need to be really careful about what you put on online, in social media, in emails. Yeah. Those things become permanent record. So I might not rant out loud in the office, but I'm ranting out loud to the Everybody. general public on, Everybody. online yes. about my workplace, about my yes. boss, about... Yes. I don't but understand you, how have people... Have you seen that? You, I see that on Facebook. Like, a lot. Oh my God. Yeah. They're crazy. No, and you yeah. know what? What I think of is, imagine if you face repercussions for it, because people think that they have limited friends, so it's, you know, it's protected mm. it never is um but the point is imagine you're job hunting again after yep. that because you get fired for that very yep. same behavior yep. or you want to quit and then you have to go out and look man you know yep. I, that's a record yeah and your future supervisors your future bosses 
can look at that record. And now you notice every, everyone wants to see your social media record. Yeah. yeah. Because they want to see who you are. It, anymore, it's n not so much IQ as it is EQ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you recovered yeah. that this week, too. Yeah. Mildly. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. Because uh, how, how, you, how balanced you are emotionally mm. is really, really critical. Yeah. Yeah. And um, also, and what a lot of people are not or may not be a, a conscious of a lot of times is when they're posting stuff, um, if, especially if it's about sensitive topics or, you know, politics, religion or something mm -hmm. that gets a lot of attention mm -hmm. and they have these strong um, opinions, maybe even, in a, you know, inappropriate, they don't realize that people look at these things and it follows you around and you develop sort of a reputation if you, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Not only that. They will put that stuff, they will take your words, it's called screenshot, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. And they will send it back <laughs> out to you oh, and to others. Of course. They will use that as leverage. Yep. You know, these days you don't even have to go on social media. People just screenshot stuff and send it to you. Yeah. You get your own highlight reel. But, you know, I wanted to use an example because in, in the US we see it all the time and it can happen even with like homosexual rants. Um, or homophobic runs, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, where it could be a decade later, it will come back and haunt you. Yes, it will. Um, so you can't yeah. just say, oh, you know, I'm keeping it real, this is how I feel and think. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's how you feel now, but 10 years from now, will you still want those words <laughs> yeah. to be representative yeah. of you? Yeah. But even um, before you get there, I mean, it's just like, you know, time and place. Yeah. Do you want to put something like that on the internet where it's forever, or do you want to discuss that with maybe a limited group of friends in person? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. People have become so, um, I think they've become so desensitized. Yeah. They will put all kinds of things on social okay. media, and, yeah. and oh my gosh, I'm always shocked. Me too, and it's not just kids. That's the part that worries me. You know, I thought kids, not kids, but young people yeah. who grew up in this generation where this was their only form of communication. Yeah. Um, but I see, you know, all ages of professionals mm -hmm. who will just put things out there that I say mm -hmm. to myself, man, that's not the best representation of who you are. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm always amazed right at the show. <gasps> you know, I'm <laughs> always amazed at the things people will, will just put out there. And it, they have their name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's no embarrassment of, yeah. of putting the kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, on TV. Yeah. And, and it's all aspects I find, um, you know, going back to, 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 the, to the EQ mm -hmm. or your online profile, I think it's not even just, you know, it's not limited to just Facebook and, you know, Instagram or whatever, pictures. It's your whole, everything that you put online, even going back to your email address. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, despite we've had, you know, um, advertisements and stuff, <laughs> every now and again, people will put, you know, on a resume or something, you'll come across, you know, sexygirl at hotmail.com or I something know. like that. <laughs> Yeah. I, know. I mean, email is free. Yeah. <laughs> Open them with your name. <laughs> it's easy. Get another name. Yeah. If you're looking for yeah. a job. <laughs> I can't believe the Bemba Gales yeah. email is still out there. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I guess it's the inexperience, yeah. you know, perhaps because if you've not been, uh, if you've never applied for a job before, you don't know, one, the amount of people who are looking. Two, you maybe don't fully grasp the concept of professionalism. So it seems like nothing to me. But if I'm a hiring manager and you identify as Bembegel, <laughs> uh, depending on what my understanding of Bembe means, it will have a particular reaction. Period. Of course, of course. Yeah. You're coming in here to fight. <laughs> Cause mischief. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's a customer service job. I'm yeah. thinking, oh, I don't know if that fits well together. So yeah. it, it's the little things like that. But yeah. I wanted to go back because you were talking about gossip and coworkers. And, you know, group dynamics in general is hard. <coughs> and that's what workplaces really are. Some, some jobs are individualistic. Some require you to work together. Mm -hmm. You've done a lot of organizational workshops. I know that much. And you know mm -hmm. there is a high level of toxicity in workplaces in this country. Dysfunctional families. But tell me, you know, if you are somebody who's new, and I always think of that, you know, new people who are going into a workplace, it could be their dream job, and they get in there, and it's just, you know, before you open the door, it reeks of toxicity. It's, 
how do you maneuver yourself? You know this is the job you want. You know this is the career you want to follow. How do you stay above the fray? Girl, let me tell you something. <laughs> Don't engage as much as possible. In the workplace, you're pleasant. Be pleasant, but try to stick to yourself. I would not engage in any of the um, going out drinking with the group. It would be a professional relationship in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Because I'll tell you, yes, we have some of these, these workplaces are like a, dis, it's like a dysfunctional family. You, you know what I mean when I say mm -hmm. that, right? You have, um, uh, there's a parent, but the parent is sort of detached. Mm -hmm. And so he's not really paying attention to the children. So there's, the supervision is very lax mm -hmm. or it is very dogmatic. Mm -hmm. And so it creates for all this tension in the office. Yeah. And then there's bickering among the, the, the children yeah. because everybody wants to find their place, right? And now this new person comes in here who's now going to also be, be trying to set themselves apart or get into, into this thing. The toxicity, yes, you walk in and you feel it, you, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. Yeah. My, my thing is, Keep yourself very professional. Go do your work. And we're going to talk a little bit about telephones and things like yeah. that. You want to, do not get on social media on, in the workplace. Don't steal from your boss. Don't do all these things that other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Stay above it. Mm -hmm. Just because all the fish are going downstream, you don't have to follow them. You can swim upstream, mm -hmm. right? And that's my recommendation, stay above it. But it's a challenge, though. It and is especially a challenge, but it's the only way. Workers. Yes, but um, that's why I'm putting it out here. Yeah, because what you want to do naturally as a human is build connection, yes. you know, um, and you work best when you work together with other yes. people. Um, but if it's a toxic environment, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to work with, with those folks. You're okay. not. So you need to stay above it. Yeah. If you find alliances, because some people will surface, there will yeah. people who will come to the top, the cream comes to the top. Mm -hmm. Those are the people then that you would go and, and make, you know, make alliances with and become friendly with. Mm -hmm. So you have support systems, because you do need a support system, yeah. right? But you have to take your time. Don't just jump in there and jump in with the, with the group that seems to be alive and partying. You want to find the people who come to the top, rise to the top, mm -hmm. stay right. above it. Communication, very important. Mm -hmm. I said earlier, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Be careful about how you say things. Um, I, I watch like sometimes you, you see some supervisors and how they speak to subordinates and it tells you so much about, about the person. It also tells you what the environment in that workplace might be. Really critical. Um, again, we talked about email. Be really careful about email. It's a, it's a, that's something that's there for. That's a written record. It's a record. It's permanent. It's a permanent record. Mm -hmm. And I put here, never put in writing something you won't say to the person's face. Mm -hmm. And if I can say it to your face, why would I put it in writing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So, be personable, but be professional. Mm -hmm. Be careful about information you share about your personal life in the workplace. Yeah. I used to be in the military, mm -hmm. and we'd have people show up on Monday mornings, and they come in, and they want to tell you everything they did Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm. And it was never, it was really never um, positive. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was all the drinking they did and everything else that went along with that. Yeah. Um, and I, I see the same sort of thing here. So it, it's not limited to the military. It's yeah. in office spaces where there are young people. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing that can... So why is that a problem? Why would you want to have your personal life out Not there? that I don't know the answer, I'm just kind of... <laughs> don't judge me. I won't do that. I know. Um, why would you want to have your personal life out there? Yeah. For people that you're not really close to, yeah. they will talk about you. Yeah. They will make fun about, fun about you in your face, mm -hmm. right? Um, they'll spread that information about you also. 
So really, really I also be cautious. See it, I also see it as a way to possibly undermine you in yeah. the end. Because if yeah. I say on a Friday morning, man, I'm so hungover, yeah. and something goes wrong today, what are they going to tell supervisor? Well, you know, uh, she was out drinking last night, so mm. probably that's why that happened. Mm. You've given the ammunition. Mm. You, that, whether or not it had anything to do with my hangover, if I didn't yeah. tell them, then... Right. You bought your own rope mm -hmm. to hang yourself, you know? Um, limit your personal calls, emails, etc. Mm -hmm. to after work. Don't do that in the workplace. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people who do, they'll get on social media and it's stealing. It is stealing. Your boss is paying you for the eight hours that you're working here. When you are on social media, you are stealing time. Okay. Uh, be careful of how you decorate your office. I've been in offices here where they have naked women and I mean it's professional officers and I yeah okay mm -hmm. government offices too yeah I, I walk in and say <laughs> excuse me wow yeah so be careful what you put on your walls be careful mm -hmm. what you put around your your office space it says it talks mm -hmm. to you, it speaks about you yeah well I think um that goes to something that you said earlier as well in that you know um, p people who are in the supervisor position so I mean yeah we are focusing a lot on the young people and people who are just entering the market but as you go um, as you progress then in your career how you treat um, people who are under you also says a lot and you also want to ma make sure that you always maintain the level of appropriateness for the work. You know, don't want to have things like you said that may make people uncomfortable. Or you say things, you know, um, on the extreme end of things, you know, we've seen um, in the States and internationally the whole Me Too thing blow up yeah. where inappropriate behavior in the workplace yeah. by the supervisor. Mm -hmm. So you have to always maintain that level of respect and appropriateness for your coworkers as well. That is such a critical point. Can I just yes. say, because I've had this conversation yes. before, people said, oh, it's a state's thing, or it's always been that way. But here's the thing, it was never right, but now people are starting to face consequences for yeah. it. So you may think you got away with it for a long time, but the world is changing, mm -hmm. and women are changing in how much they speak mm -hmm. up. So you really got to be careful. Some of the things that people do borders on sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. It really borders on it. I should not ever walk into an office as a as a consumer and see something on a wall. Yeah. And I, I remember saying to the young man, uh, you think you really want to have that up there? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And he says, what's wrong with it? I'm thinking, if you don't know what's wrong with it, <laughs> something's really, really wrong. Yeah. Right? And, um, he, and if your supervisor hasn't called you out for it, yeah, yeah that's What's interesting. that saying? Yeah. 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 What is that saying? So be careful of the pictures you used to decorate. Uh, so be very respectful of others and yourself mm -hmm. in the way you, your decor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. having, having suggestive um, sculptures and things like that in your office. Be really careful. Okay. What I didn't put on here, um, is like you also need to be very respectful of people's personal space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't just walk into other people's office or uh, knock knock and then enter because you don't know what they're doing it's their personal space and mm -hmm. um, a lot of i think a lot of folks i talk about it as boundaries but you have personal space marlene we all have personal space yeah i need to ask your permission to come into your space and so as a new person coming into, um, into the workplace, respect the personal space of others. Yeah. Don't go in and borrow pencils off their desk or borrow things off their desk without their permission. Personal space, yeah. okay? And I think um, it's physical and also it could be mental or emotional. So you wanna also be respectful of other people's things that are personal to them. It could be their religious beliefs, it could be, you know, political persuasions, things that Not really, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> things that don't really um, have a place in the workplace yeah. when, you know, you may have a diverse setting yeah. um, and you want to keep that, those things so that you can always keep it professional, yeah. keep yeah. those things, you know, private. private. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I was also thinking sometimes, yeah, I always remember a conversation where you spoke of just 
being the type of energy that, that you would like to see in the workspace because yes it may be a toxic environment but I can come in and just be completely reserved or I could just treat people the way I would wish in an ideal world they'll treat me yes, so yes, yes. you can have a boss that never acknowledges you but that doesn't mean you don't greet them and, and exactly you always want to acknowledge the, yeah. the, your boss your co-workers I don't care how you feel. I come in and I will say, morning. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. That is you. Good morning. <laughs> I'm a sail pass and I'll go to my office and yeah. I'll turn on my little music yeah. and I'll be in my space, yeah. right? And I'm going to pass you in the afternoon. I'm going to say good afternoon again because I'm grateful. Because I that's who you gratitude. are. Yeah. yeah. But see, anyone can learn to do that. Yeah. Anyone can learn to do that. You change. You see, the thing is, you change other people when you change yourself. Mm -hmm. So be the change that you want to see in the world. And as people watch you, they are then going to make the changes in response to the changes you made. Yeah. You know. So you can protect yourself uh, from the type of negativity you see, but it doesn't mean that you will change yep. who you mm -hmm. are as exactly. well. Exactly. What about pushing through challenging times? One of the things I know that I, I hear a lot in the conversation um, amongst employers is that some of the people who are entering the workplace kind of think it's going to be a perfect fit from the start and perhaps they're not as open to really sticking it out to see if it works mm -hmm. what's your advice to people knowing okay i'm this is my first job i thought it was going to be great um i don't want to be here because it's not what i thought you know what i mean yeah I, and see the thing is you don't want to be a quitter yeah mm -hmm. You do not want to be a quitter. What, what I really want to recommend to young people, you come into the job, nothing is going to be easy. Nothing is going to be ever handed to you on a silver platter. Nothing. You have to work at it. You work at it. You work in the workplace. Maintain your self of se sense of self-confidence. Maintain who you are, your integrity. Mm -hmm. And do your work to the best of your ability. Not perfection being the best that you can be, doing yeah. the best that you can at your job. Yeah. And sell yourself the way you are, right? No, quit your job. I, I do not recommend anybody quit a job before they've tried it for 12 months at minimum. Whoa, okay, 12 months. I didn't know you'd say 12, I thought you'd say yeah. six. No, 12. But it also looks good on, it's, it's better for your resume if yes. it's 12 months. Yes, if you leave a job and you're leaving jobs after six months, it, it's a, it, I would look at that. Mm -hmm. There's a pattern here. Mm -hmm. You're a quitter, why would I want to hire you? Yeah. So you want to stay with a job for 12 months. Mm -hmm. After 12 months, if it's not working out, then you start looking for something else. Yeah. But you've got to show stick to itiveness and you've got to show resilience. Yeah. You know? What's the number one thing you tell a, a new, a first time um, employee to do to really establish uh, a positive work ethic? Ah, oh, a young person coming into the job. Yeah. I would definitely say to the young person, try your best to be positive. Mm -hmm. Be positive. Your supervisor brings you work. Do your work to the best of your ability. You get done with it and go get more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go and get more. Seriously. Don't sit there and say, okay, sit on my laurels, I'm finished. Yeah. If, there's, if all the work is done, see what your coworkers may need some help. Yeah. Try to... Try to ex exude confidence, but also exude assistance, yeah. you know. Um, I never had problems in the workplace. I, I never did. Because I always... Well, because and you again, walk in saying, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but our parents taught us, and your mom is like this. Yeah, my mom is. You, your, our parents taught us that no matter how bad things are, yeah. somebody else is having a worse day than you are. Yeah. So you come in yeah. here and you give it your all. Right, and you work to the best of your ability and help the others around you when you can. Yeah. Right, we've become so selfish that we, we wa everybody wants to look good, and so we want to call somebody down to get into their place. And, and it's not working, it has not been working. Yeah, so we need to go back to what worked, mm -hmm. you know. Where and, and I want I encourage young people you come into the workplace and give it your hundred yes, percent every right. time, every day. Yeah, right. You will shine like a star. People are watching you. 
Mm. Trust me. You can always spot hard workers. Yes. You can. And those are the people I'm gonna go for. Those are the people I want I want around me. Those on your people team. on my yeah. team, yeah. Mm -hmm. And on the yeah. flip side of Marlene's question, are what's uh, what are like the most common mistakes that you've seen that young people make when you know they're just starting or when they're, you know, in an interview or something? In the interview? <laughs> <laughs> Lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. That that's always very scary. Uh, when you meet people who come in and, and they, they're not really sure that they want the job and the first thing they ask you is how much money. Um, while, while it's important to know how much you'll be making, you ask that as the very last thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you want to know is what the job is about and how do I negotiate this job, how do I navigate this job. Yeah. I, those are the things that I like to hear from, from a new employer, a potential employee. Yeah. How, well, how, how can I contribute? How can I help to make this, this company a better company and a, and a stronger company? I want a team player, somebody who's going to come in and they will join with everybody else despite every, all, all the politics. They are going to come in and be a team player. Yeah. That's, that's the person who is going to be a strong worker and who is going to make my company shine. And it goes right back to the conversation we had a few days ago about emotional intelligence yes. becoming perhaps one of the most sought after yes. uh, skill set that yes. people are able to function within an environment yep. and not make it hostile and be yep. a team player beyond all the experience you may bring to the table. Yep. So you have, you have people who have they have the high IQ scores and they have the high scores in, uh, from college, but no personality. Mm -hmm. And they come in and they're ugly to the uh, to co-workers and they're, um, they're just, a, just a bit shy of being belligerent to the boss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not somebody I want in my workspace. I, I, I prefer to get the person who exudes all that emotional quotient. You know, um, that's a person who is going to be a team player. I say the word again, team player. Yeah. They're going to work alone. They may not like each other, but they're going to work with the group and get the job done to the best of their ability. That's what you want. Yeah, um, actually that, that um, brings up something also which is important in that um, a lot of young people are just making that school to work transition. Mm -hmm. So that's difficult for a whole lot of people because they're not used to a real professional environment 24-7. Mm -hmm. I mean, they may have had summer jobs or part-time jobs, but mm -hmm. now that they have the full, um, the full experience, it's a completely different adjustment. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of advice, and this is why mentorship is important, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of advice you can pass on to young people. When you've never been exposed to the world of work, it's kind of a guessing game when you go in. And, and like I said, I, from speaking to anyone, you know that most mm -hmm. work environments have some level of toxicity. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of teaching them, you know, what place do you want to be? Do you want to just jump straight into the rut, or do you want to be Swim one? Upstream. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and sometimes it, it takes a lot of uh, resilience to, yeah. to stay above that fray. And yeah. for the young ones coming in, given the age and the need to bond and connect and build friends, uh, sometimes they get lost in it. And again, I'll, I'll, say, I'll repeat myself, pace yourself. Yeah. Pace yourself. Yeah. Don't just jump into the negative bunch or jump into the partying bunch. Yeah. Pace yourself. Yeah. Keep your eyes and watch what's happening. Do your work to the best of your ability. Be a good assistant. Yeah. But pace yourself and select the people who are going to be supportive. Yeah. People you can depend on, not people who are going to use what you say against you. Mm -hmm. Or be afraid of you because they think that, oh, you, you're smarter than they are or something, and try to find ways to pull you down. Yeah. You won't know that unless you've taken time to step back and see who it is that yeah. you're dealing with. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of advice. I mean, if you're a viewer and you'd want to tell young people or first-time uh, employees some advice, go ahead and post it, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to read it and, and get some of the information that we wish we could share with even our younger selves when we first got yeah. started. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Because I see some of the young younger ones, and I mean, they're like fresh out of high school, they're entry-level jobs, but it's like little things that you know could really set them apart, but they don't yeah. know it's like 
don't be exact in the beginning because if yeah. you show you're a hard worker when you said go back for more work i see it all the time um it's like this my job title says exactly this well you'll be stuck doing only that yeah, yeah. if you don't show what else you can do <laughs> i used to come in early i used to yeah. come in before if work started at eight o'clock i made sure i was there at 7 30 mm-hmm. and get my coffee and go sit at my desk and start you know and sometimes i just start working mm-hmm. right you set yourself set yourself and show who you are show that exactness mm-hmm. uh, it's so crazy yeah and so those are some of the things i hope young people are listening to this yeah. who are going out for jobs because as a supervisor and as an as a business owner i'm looking at all my employees and i'm looking at the ones that i are team players those are the people i'm going to hold yeah i'm going to hold on to the team players yeah, yeah. all right what would you tell your younger self Kevin? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, j- just like what uh, Jenny said, pace yourself. Yeah. Um, especially the first, um, I would say, first few months making mm. that school to work transition. I mean, yeah. it's one thing to know something to write a test versus putting it into practice in real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it can be stressful, it can be kind of nerve wracking to actually be a, you know, do, um, do things in a professional setting for the first time. So I think if I had just taken a step back and tried mm-hmm. to really engage more in the process rather than thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to do, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's or that. ask for help. Sometimes. Or ask for help, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Just avoid the negative thoughts. Avoid yeah. them. And you can. <laughs> it you seems can. impossible, but you can. You can. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. All right, Jenny, this has been a lovely conversation. We really appreciate you You're coming welcome. in and uh, sharing your expertise and really helping us to, to pass on the advice that we know people can yeah. make use of. Yeah. Right? Yes, yeah. ma'am. That's mm-hmm. it for us with Brock It Down with Jenny. Brock we'll take a break down. and we'll be <laughs> back in a few. So stay tuned. These are the people who I want to appeal to make those little slips. It happens. You have to have a plan to manage your problems effectively. How are you going to do it? Fall off the horse, jump right back on. 